Surprise. <laughs> when I saw Ernie this morning, and he asked if I would just read his sermon for him, which I'm happy to do, it's a good sermon, a couple of things came to mind. First of all, I took a look at the title, A Will and a Way. First thing that came to my mind, I understand I'm not paranoid, but I have to be real here, is that uh, perhaps my wife had called Ernie and asked him to update my will because she had found a way <laughs> to, uh, to undo me. <clears throat> but I should have known something was up when I saw Cindy before early service. She was absolutely radiant. She had a smile from here to here. Now I know why. It's going to be a quiet afternoon. I will uh, go to verse 25 here and, and uh, just uh, pray that, uh, like this young lady did when she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me because I'm going to need some here. Our gospel lesson today shows a side of Jesus that looks unfamiliar. We see a Jesus who seems to be somewhat biased or even racist in his dealings with the Canaanite woman. There were a few groups that the Jews hated as much as they did the Canaanites. For the typical Jew, this behavior was the norm, but clearly Jesus never acted that way, at least not in this scene. The incident came soon after Jesus fed the 5,000, and from that region he had traveled about 50 miles on foot to the air area of Tyre and Sidon. This was an area occupied by people of numerous religions. But none of these religions was more revolting to the Jews than the Canaanite religion. These people were especially hated. There doesn't appear to be any compelling reason for Jesus to talk, walk with this 100 miles round trip other than to act with this Canaanite woman. We should remember that this gospel was written by Matthew, the Jewish tax collector, written by a Jew with the anticipated audience of Jews. It's important to understand that it was an incredible thing for Matthew to witness and write about this Canaanite woman who was from that vicinity and came to Jesus crying out to him, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Certainly it was nothing new for someone to come to Jesus crying out for healing, either for themselves or for someone they loved. News was traveling fast about Jesus' ability to heal. The feeding of the 5,000 that we dealt with two weeks ago came about because of the crush of people looking for the master so that they could be healed. But a Canaanite, well, they were religious scum as far as the Jews were concerned. And it didn't help that this particular Canaanite was a woman. As you well know, in the time of Jesus, women had very little status in Jewish society. They were considered the property of their husbands or their fathers. They had few rights. Their inferior status was reinforced by the religious customs of the day. That fact is obvious when you look at the construction of the Jewish temple. Inside was a wall that separated Jewish women from the men. There was another that separated the laity from the priests. And on the one hand, these separations were meant to honor God. On the other hand, these walls bore the message, we are special, this is special, you're not quite so special. In that culture, men were special, women were not. Also, in Jesus' time, it was not kosher for a Jewish man to interact with a strange woman, particularly a Canaanite woman. She surely knew this. Who did this woman think she was crying out to a Jewish teacher like this? 
Now it's really interesting that she called him Lord, the son of David, because this is a messianic title. Outside of Simon Peter, who else was ready to proclaim Jesus as the Messiah? No one in Matthew's gospel. Well, we see there's more to this woman than meets the eye. Earlier I mentioned that Jesus sounded biased and prejudiced towards women, and scripture states, but she came and knelt before him saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Oh, did Jesus just tell this woman she was a dog? I was right. This doesn't sound like Jesus at all. There must be some backstory here that Matthew didn't know, such as perhaps this woman knew that Jesus was just testing her, not putting her down. It could also be that Jesus was using this incident as a terrific real-life parable for his disciples. He was saying what must have been in all of their minds, that this woman wasn't worthy of the Savior's time and attention. Well, what do you know? None of us are worthy of that. And then this woman gives a wonderful response. Yes, it is, Lord, she said, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Touche! You weren't going to dismiss this worried mother with a casual, offhanded remark. She knew who she was. She might be a Canaanite, she might be a woman, but she had a place in this world. She had rights as a child of God, and besides, she knew that she was in the presence of the Messiah. If she knew anything at all about the messianic age prophesied by the Jews, she knew would, be, would usher in an age of peace and justice. If Jesus was who he said he was, he would not turn her away. It would be unjust. And of course, he didn't. Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. This mother had the will to have her daughter healed, and she found a way to get it done. Once again, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. In this lesson, Jesus invites us to look inside ourselves to the sin of prejudice. Prejudice comes in many forms. Prejudice can keep us from seeing other people and their needs. Prejudice can cause us to ignore and even people who are not like us. And let's face it, almost all societies have groups of people that they have a, like, a dislike for or a prejudice against. And in Christian life, that is of course wrong. Jesus is showing that even if there is a problem with a particular group, God still loves them, God still hears their prayers, God still heals them, and God still forgives them and offers them salvation. He calls us to do likewise. However, understand this, when Jesus returns, all prejudice in the world will be expelled. It's not as if those people showed up in church wearing New England Patriot attire. <laughs> <clears throat> These people we just have to look at differently but not Jesus. He even loves New England Patriot fans. This is why Jesus calling us to pray that bias and prejudice in our lives would be turned around to brotherly and sisterly love and respect for all people. I pray that we would more quickly notice the similarities in people rather than differences. And most of all, I pray today that we would do our best to follow the ways of our Savior and provide wherever provisions are needed. Amen. And God bless us as we walk in the ways of the Lord. Amen.